From Both Sides Written and read by John Katanj The deep contented snoring confirmed that he was asleep, his lust fulfilled. Amelia studied the contours of his face in the gathering dusk, wondered at his ability to instantly fall into a serene slumber, and realised that she no longer loved or even liked him. She felt worthless, her spirit broken by his patronising, his demands and his ingratitude, and she knew that the point of no return had arrived. Amelia rose and traipsed to the bathroom, her bare feet moving noiselessly across the tile floor. She instinctively locked the door before turning on the shower full blast in a vain attempt to purge the traces of him that clung to her body and mocked her. She furiously scrubbed herself to remove all traces of his ferocity. On the shower floor, the lather mingled with his sweat and her tears and found freedom as they disappeared into the drainage system. After drying herself, Amelia slipped into her dressing gown and stumbled downstairs. She considered a cuppa but opted instead for a large G&T. She checked the clock, 10 o'clock, dusk, marking the conclusion of another scorching day. She turned on the television news but found herself unable to concentrate. Instead, her mind focused on Edward and on what he had become. It hadn't always been like this. She recalled the start of their romance 15 years ago when he had seemed so genuine, caring and loving. How he had regularly showered her with flowers, jewellery and even poetry expressing his undying love. Amelia had no hesitation in agreeing to marry him, no qualms in believing that their love would last an eternity. She remembered the pre-wedding rehearsal completed alongside two other couples due to tie the knot. One of the girls had laughingly suggested that as the divorce rate was 30 odd percent, one of their marriages was doomed to fail. Amelia had spent the next few minutes deciding which of the other marriages it would be. She was either so naive or so besotted that the thought hadn't occurred that it might be theirs. It started so well, Edward had achieved success in his chosen career in accountancy and owned a thriving practice. When he'd suggested that she give up her supermarket job, she'd agreed, though neither of them was the parental type and had no intention of owning a pet, let alone conceiving a child. She often wondered as the reason Edward had intimated that they no longer needed her paltry wage and she would have more time to herself. Was this true or was Edward embarrassed to admit that his wife was a checkout girl? Was he ashamed of her and was that why he made excuses when they were invited out? Amelia poured another drink, turned off the television and drew the curtains. She had tried her best and no one could blame her. She'd been faithful, always supported him and been the dutiful wife. And Edward? When had he last bought her flowers, complimented her, told her he loved her? All he cared about was the practice, making more money and the trappings of success. She had been happy in the terraced house near the town centre, but since then they had moved five times and Edward was now seeking an even more salubrious property. Why another bedroom, another bathroom, a yet larger garden? The same went for the car, traded in every year for a more glamorous model, so he could pose to his vain, status-conscious friends. Was there somebody else? Was that why Edward worked late so often? Amelia had long suspected his snobby receptionist, Jackie, the sneer in her tone, the, the pleasure she took in stating that he was out of the office or engaged with an important client. Jackie was welcome to him. Good riddance and good luck with his moods, contempt, indifference and his sweaty feet. Amelia rose shakily from the armchair and pulled another gin, this time straight. As she slumped back, she imagined him sleeping peacefully, lying naked on top of the duvet, not a care in the world, and certainly not for her. She felt morose and tasted the teardrops as they cascaded down her cheeks. She wondered why she'd stuck it so long, why she hadn't walked out years ago. With a mountain bitterness, Amelia recalled the time she had tried to discuss the situation how Edward steadfastly refused to accept that they had problems, assuring her there was just one of those rocky patches that all good marriages go through. Amelia knew that she should have brought matters to a head before, yet now was better than never. She was only 39 and there was still time. Tomorrow she would tell him, pack a few essentials and go. She'd made her decision and within minutes had dropped into a restless, semi-inebriated slumber. In the master bedroom, Edward awoke 
and automatically reached out. Sensing Amelia's absence, he rose and fumbled to the window. The heat of the night enveloped the room and Edward felt beads of sweat on his forehead. He unfastened the catch and gazed into the night. A cat darted across the avenue and he picked up the car headlights on the dual carriageway a mile or so away. He deliberated about going downstairs to find her, but decided against it. Amelia was old enough to look after herself and wouldn't have gone far, probably in the living room watching a film. Edward returned to bed, but found he couldn't sleep and couldn't get Amelia out of his mind. He knew that things between them were badly awry, yet whenever he tried to discuss the situation, Amelia instinctively resorted to arguments that solved nothing and only served to force the wedge in deeper. Edward had tried his best, done more than his share, and made sure she wanted for nothing. He recalled how he'd slogged through his accountancy exams and pushed himself to breaking point in a second-rate firm, how he'd finally managed to raise enough to fund his own practice and build it by sheer graft. Also, Amelia could enjoy the lifestyle she deserved, to take her from the humble two-up, two-down terraced house she'd been brought up in and give her the palatial lifestyle they shared. Edward recalled how he'd persuaded Amelia to quit her job in the supermarket, how she used to arrive home drained and exhausted and for what, how glad he'd been when she finally agreed to leave, especially in view of his concerns about the attention she was getting from that sweaty, overweight shop manager, Steve, who treated Edward like dirt drooling and enthusiasm about Amelia being a credit to the company. Edward knew too well what that loser was after, the smarmy bastard. Amelia never showed any gratitude, not happy when they upgraded the house or car, always moaning about how she preferred the old ones, never made the effort when they met friends and colleagues. Yes, she dressed up and looked the part, but she was always ill at ease, ever ready to feign the headache and inevitably the first to leave, never making the effort to get to know them until he eventually gave it up as a bad job. Edward got up and relieved himself in the ensuite WC. As he strolled back, the realisation hit him that he no longer loved Amelia or wanted her to share his success, no longer felt anything for her. It had gone too far. Amelia had let herself go, allowed the ravages of time to steal away the full bloom of youth without so much as putting up a fight. And the alcohol didn't help. Despite Amelia's denials, Edward knew that she was drinking too much. He'd noted the glazed look and the empty gin bottles had confirmed his suspicions. And invariably, he tasted the alcohol in her breath when he kissed her, when he tried to show he still cared, tried to revive the passion they'd once shared. And still he failed to understand how Amelia could lie there like tonight, indifferent and unresponsive, like making love to a corpse. Edward knew what he had to do. Tomorrow he would tell Amelia it was over, that he had reached the end and there was no going back. He turned over and was asleep within minutes. They both slept late. Amelia stirred with a throbbing headache and caught sight of the empty gin bottle and the tumbler lying on its side. At the same time, Edward woke and rushed to the shower. He had important clients to see, and they were not the kind to keep waiting. No time for breakfast, not even a cup of tea, and any confrontation would have to wait. Edward grabbed his briefcase and keys and bolted for the car. It was another sweltering morning. Edward switched on the air conditioning and moved effortlessly onto the road. As he reached the dual carriageway, and in the knowledge that he would be late for the meeting, he decided to get a message to Jackie, his secretary. As Edward dialed, his attention was momentarily lacking, and he failed to see the truck pulling out ahead. He was driving too fast and barely touched his brakes before the inevitable happened. One loud and all too brief screech, an almighty bang, and the deathly crunch of metal on metal. For Edward, silence and peace, and for rescuers, the harrowing experience of literally picking up the pieces. Amelia had dressed and breakfasted on gin and orange by the time the police arrived. The two officers had seen it many times, but even they weren't prepared for the casual way she accepted his death. Amelia realised they couldn't quite make her out, couldn't decide whether she was a stone-hearted bitch or the stiff upper lip type who wouldn't show emotion but break down uncontrollably later. All she could think about was getting rid of them and steadying her nerves with a few drinks. She was barely sober across the next few days with too many of his friends, relations and cronies calling to tell her how wonderful Edward was, so friendly and hardworking. To them, the perfect man, to her, a dreadful husband. And when the day of the funeral dawned, there were enough blooms to stock a florist, sufficient tears to fill a bath, ample food to supply a small African nation. Yet all Amelia wanted was for it to be over, for the last mourners to depart and leave her to her private thoughts. Finally, she was alone, 
but able to think constructively for the first time in days. Amelia's thoughts turned to the house Edward would never enter again, the mangled car he wouldn't drive, and the money he would never spend. Too late for another chance, Edward's time had come and gone with no goodbyes, and nothing could bring him back. Which was just as well, because Amelia was going to do her level best to enjoy herself, and that would never have been possible with Edward still on the scene, and with the hassle of a messy divorce. Only one motto made sense, live for today, for tomorrow may never come. For Edward, that was certainly true. Amelia chuckled, kicked off her shoes, and poured herself yet another generous G&T.